Hey everyone, John Kolb with Suffering Outdoors. Today my video is everything you need to know about hunting with a climbing tree stand. This is my first video in a mobile hunting tree stand series where I'm going to go over climbing tree stand, hang on tree stand, and a hunting saddle. I'm going to give you the weights of my setups for all of them, show you how I set each up, and then explain the benefits, pros, and cons of each strategy and why I'm going with certain strategies in some situations over others. So make sure you are subscribed and you follow along and you check out the other videos as they come out. So I am using a lone wolf hang on stand. This is currently not available brand new, but I'm hoping soon that these will come back online. You'll be able to buy them new. My total setup weight for this climber stand is 22 pounds. Now that includes my ruck strap. It includes my uh, more padded seat cushion, the strap, my safety harness, total weight of the system, 22 pounds. So I like the ruck straps. I got these on eBay for probably 30 or $40. And what I like about them is they help distribute the weight more evenly across your shoulders. I have the kidney belt option. And then you have this strap here at your chest. And this helps spread out the weight between your hips and your shoulders. So when I'm carrying my camera equipment in, it's a lot more comfortable than the straps that come with the stand. What I really like about the stand as well is it has this flat profile to your back compared to other options. So when I'm walking through the woods, I have these sticking up a little bit. You can put them in a little bit more, but it's really nice and compact. So I can climb under laurel, go around trees, under branches, and it's not getting caught in everything. So climbing stands seem to have fallen out of style here in 2022, but I still think that they are highly effective killing machines in public woods, especially in the big woods of Pennsylvania that's uh, dominated by hardwoods. So most of the trees, the areas that I'm hunting, we have oak trees, we have maple trees, a lot of hardwood trees that are straight and have less branches than maybe in low-lying areas or swamps um, or field edges. So I'm not as limited when I go into an area most of the trees that I'm hunting around, I'm going, to be, I'm going to have an option to climb up in and hunt out of. So Lone Wolf has this bungee strap that hooks onto the top of the stand. And then I hook the two hooks on the bottom of the platform that holds the seat on. The angle of your seat is going to be a lot less important than the angle of your platform. And I'll explain why here in a minute usually get my seat just at a slight angle but not too aggressive and then the platform now to put this around the tree i found the easiest way is just to reach around and grab the strap with the stand out with your left hand and then bring it around okay so you see i have my stand set up at a slight angle. That angle is very key depending on how aggressively your tree tapers. If you have a nice tree that's about the same width the entire way up, you don't need much of a taper. But if you have a tree that's gonna aggressively taper down, you want the stand to be at a much steeper angle when you start climbing. And the reason is, as you get up the tree, you'll notice when the tree gets skinnier, your stand starts to hang down. It hangs down a little bit, that's okay. But if you get past the point of levelness and you start getting down here, you start getting into a dangerous situation and you don't want that either A, slipping out of the stand or the stand uh, buckling on you and falling out. So keep your decent taper and that will take some practice and adjustment over time. So to get into the stand, super easy. Also, I'm gonna mention Safety is very important. I'm using a safety harness. I will strap my tether around the tree once I get up to the stand. I do not have the tether attached to the base. I highly recommend that, especially when you're first starting out with a climber stand, 
because if this falls down when you're up in the tree, you're down the creek without a paddle. I will say that the lone wolf is very good at biting into the tree, especially with the strap design and the teeth on the base. I have not had that happen to me. I've been using a climbing stand, this particular one for seven seasons now, and I've never had it fall down the tree. But when you're just starting out, you want to make sure that you're using the tether system to avoid that for safety purposes. So how I climb into the tree, offset your seat just a little bit from your base, and then you just one foot on the tree and do a pull up into the tree. Same way going down. So some climbers will actually have straps that you strap your feet in. With this, the first time I used it, I was a little nervous because there's no strap. You put your foot underneath the bracket. But since I've used this for a couple seasons and, and for multiple years here, um, it's super comfortable. And I always, no matter what I'm doing, as through the climbing process, I always have one foot here holding the stand. As I mentioned before, how I've never had it slip the whole time I'm climbing, my left foot never leaves this location. I'll step back with my right foot to put pressure on the back side of the stand to keep it from slipping. But again, my other foot's here, locked down the entire climb. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick illustration on how to climb with a climbing stand. And I'll show you a neat trick for a way to climb up the tree really quickly and efficiently. Okay, so when I'm climbing, I usually get my safety harness as high as I can up above my head. And my bow rope wrapped around my seat. That's a good way to keep it from getting tangled. So most guys, when they climb a climber stand, this is how they do it. You uh, put your hands on the straps around the tree, get your feet to lift it up. We'd like to get it started. and inch your way up the tree. I don't have all day, and I like to get up the tree as quickly as I can. So let, you sh let me show you what our group does to speed up the climbing process a little bit. I also feel that it's a little safer with not using the tether because I keep my feet locked in the entire time. So what I do, I put my stand as high as I can go right about at the level of my safety harness. Feet in. And I do a pull up. I'll show you one more move. Move the stand up again, about to that level. And do a pull up. You can see how quickly I can cover ground with this method compared to the short little bumps up and down by standing and climbing with your hands on the straps. So I'll illustrate now coming down. I'm gonna do the exact same technique. Pop the base off the tree, lower it down. Just keep in mind where your safety harness is so you don't go too far. Again, you can do this method but I just feel like it takes a lot longer to go up and down the tree. Now, safety is the most important thing. So if you feel more safe and secure doing it that way, do it that way. But if you're able to, you want to speed up the process, pull-up method works great. Make sure as you're climbing that you're keeping your the bracket bolts here tight. I have noticed on the climber that my feet bump some as I climb my boots, so I need to make sure that they're tight so I don't have an issue there. Also, as far as tree selection, try to make sure that the tree is living and safe. Um, look for dead bark. I'll also look up at, in the fall time, in the light, that the trees have buds on them or leaves. Um, look for dead branches. Avoid those kind of trees with, with dead branches. It'll be good there if you're avoiding the dead trees. Okay, I'm gonna illustrate tearing down the stand and, and kind of show you how quick that is as well. So I usually start with my base, take that off the tree, 
I always just lean it right up against the tree. Strap down. Unscrew the platform bracket here. Flatten it out. Tighten those bolts. Same thing with the seat. Strap that down. Usually use my knee to hold my seat on. Get your buckle. And I am ready to get out of the woods. Compare that to climbing down, taking sticks off, attaching them to the, your base of your stand and walking out. It's just so much quicker and more efficient than a hang on or, or a saddle. But of course, I'll mention some of the limitations of the climber as well. Let me give you another quick hunting related tip to stay concealed. So the types of trees that we need to climb are generally straighter trees uh, without branches, which means they lack cover. So if I'm looking at an area to hunt and I have some trails coming together or a spot I want to get set up, the first thing I look for is that straight tree. Um, a double or triple tree is awesome because you have some concealment from the other tree trunks that are around you. So that's one key. The other key is uh, being aware of where your canopy is. You don't want to go above the canopy to where you don't have clear shots through it, but the canopy can be a good key for concealment. So if I'm climbing a tree, a lot of times I'll go to that first branch if it's an oak tree with leaves still on it to have something to break my outline up. Or if you're up just at that part of the canopy where you're not getting skylined or the deer can't see you move as well, that's a, another tip to stay concealed and in lethal in a climber stand. The other thing you want to do when you're getting set is make sure you're putting more tension on the back side of the stand and that's going to keep the, the stand biting into the tree. When you start any type of climber, when you start getting in this no man's land, that's where bad things can happen and you can slip off the tree. Now I've had my top fall down. You want to be careful on that. If you bump that, that's an easy fall down. And if that goes all the way and hits your base, that's going to be a loud clanking. And you can basically hear in these pressured woods in Pennsylvania, that's the end of your hunt. So you got to be careful with that too. Big benefit to the lone wolf stands, in my opinion, is these uh, rubber type straps. See how they're notched? That provides an extra grip onto the tree, which again, keeps it from sliding down. You also have very fine points to adjust the stand for tightness or looseness um, versus having my first climber stand I got, it was probably four inches between each point. This is one about every half inch. Uh, so that's really nice. You can really tone it or fine tune it between those small uh, adjustment points. Okay, so for this part of the video, I'm going to illustrate the most beneficial part of a climber stand, and that is quick setup time. I'm going to time it, and then in my last video comparing climbers to hang-ons to saddles, I'm going to show you the time of each, comparing each method as far as setup time. I'm going to move my tether up, the safety harness, as high as I can get it, so if I fall, you don't have a long dead drop. It'll catch relatively quick. Set your seat, seat up a comfortable level. Okay, so here's the other thing you want to do. Now's the time to tighten your seat up. Just one or two, maybe three clicks. So that's not falling down. And I'm ready to hunt. Oh, let's see how much time that took me. That took just over six minutes. Now when I hunt, because I'm self-filming, I usually set my camera up on my right side and I want the deer to move in front of me if I have good cover. If I don't have cover, I will set up with my camera here and the, I want the deer to move almost like I'm saddle hunting in front of me. And then this is my father-in-law's trick. 
that he taught us. You put the seat a little lower and then you can rest your knees on the seat. You see the deer coming, get your bow, pull it back, or if you need to go on this side, and it's almost the exact same thing as saddle hunting. Of course, the biggest pro is this is a mobile system. And the best way to describe it, if you're used to, to hunting fixed stands, either a ladder stand or a fixed lock on, that's just there at the tree. Imagine if uh, Tom Brady or Peyton Manning were given a play by the coach. They go up to the line of scrimmage, they see the defense, and they can't call an audible and, and change that play. Um, that's the biggest benefit of hunting mobile. You get into the woods, the area you want to hunt, and then you can read the signs, uh, see where the deer are moving, if a scrape's hot or not, and then move. The biggest con, of course, if you're not hunting big woods or areas with lots of straight hardwood trees, you're gonna have uh, much more, much less options. You're gonna be much more limited as far as the trees that you can get up in. Um, maybe a little less cover too, the types of trees that we're climbing. So you do have to go a little higher. So if you're afraid of heights and wanna feel more secure, uh, climber stands, specifically this model is probably not the choice for you. As far as another potential con is there's not many options out there. The two big options are either the lone wolf hand climber or assault uh, climber or the summit climber. As far as weights go, I mentioned earlier that my full setup is about 22 pounds. This is the bigger option. If you go to the smaller assault option, you would lose about you would lose about three pounds with the assault hand climber, which is huge. In fact, when I was doing the research and the setup weights, the assault hand climber has a smaller platform. That's going to be lighter than some of the most popular lightweight options, whether it's Lone Wolf Custom Gear, their 0.75 or 0.5, or even the new popular Beast stand from Dan Infolt. The assault hand climber is lighter than all those options. The only other lighter option is using a saddle. If you're looking for some high quality, really good deer hunting content, make sure you check out some of my other videos. I'm getting into some really nice deer here in public ground in Pennsylvania, both hunting mobily and on the ground. Um, each year I'm finding some really awesome mountain bucks that I'm chasing, so I think you guys would really appreciate that content. So check it out and have a great day.